afraid. I thought these people don't want to hear me talking about my feelings. <laughs> my family left. I was homeless. Everything just seemed so easy to give up on. You guys are going to have to run the whole thing. I hate organizing anything. Embrace the fear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you write a song, mix, master, produce. All of this work that is going into this is for you. It's because, yes, you are worth it. Hola. Hey, everyone. Good morning. Come on. I'm taking a tour in the house. I'm going to show you a piece of music I made. I have all this energy, and I just don't really know what to do with it right now. Imagine how strong my mind can be if I use it um, in a more positive way. Two years ago, they took away my cars, you know the feels. Uh, in the hall, like, after the ball, like, after the ball, repeat. Wow, wow, wow. That's just me going, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and I... Your faces up here, bro, looking at us. Yeah, yeah. If you want to talk, we can talk it out. My heart's like a crater. Crescendo Trust is a platform operating in the charitable sector that offers mentors to rangatahi aged 12 to 24. The mentors that we have are all in the arts, so it's all around music, audio engineering, production, events, and we use those skills to find meaningful pathways for our rangatahi. If it wasn't for Crescendo, I wouldn't have known where to take my music. They've helped a lot with me forming a path. I just want to see you shine. When a young person comes into our doors, we sit down with them, find out about you know, all of their history, their, their family environment, their health, their well-being, and then we just grow the relationship from there. That's my man. Mahi, I gotta change my undies <laughs> Music has helped me to open up, to be more vulnerable. I remember the first show I did, I was singing to the ground because I was afraid, like, I, I thought, these people don't want to hear me talking about my feelings and stuff. My legs were like shaking just then. <laughs> what did it be? It was me. Oh, ah, yeah. And after that show, someone came up to me and they were like, bro, your performance was really good. I'd just say one tip is just don't be afraid to show yourself, kind of thing. Just the stage presence. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. That's something we need to work on together, eh? I could see you, like, really selling that song. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of, like, a simple hand gesture or, or something like that. We'll get there, bro. Yeah. The co-papa of the Crescendo Trust was very much based around my adopted mother. As a kid, I would run home, bring eight friends of mine. She'd be waiting there with, like, sandwiches and the soda stream already, and she didn't give a shit about where they came from or their stories. It was like, mm, you're fine out here. So I, at an early age, I got to really learn about unconditional love and what that meant. Music has helped me to just see it how it is. And sometimes you just gotta let yourself be sad and music's like a good way for me to do it. The last year, there was a period of a few months where I had pretty much no communication with anyone. No one really spoke to me, and I don't really speak to anyone else. It was a hard time. I feel like generally hardships push people to grow, force people to grow. <laughs> the thing about Crescendo is they're not just a space for young people to make music. They're a family and they're my support network. 
And without them, I don't think I would have been able to find my voice again. Yeah. Can you bring me to my knees? Let me worship your body. I feel like my journey with music has just been about me trying to understand myself and find out more about who I am. And I think with everything that I've been through, I've just been in the space of not knowing what I wanted to be or what I wanted my music to sound like. But the more that I produce music with Crescendo, it's been really cool just getting to uncover what Irish's music should be. I like this one because your voice, there's a lot of vulnerability in it. That's probably what's making me drawn to it. We don't judge. You got all kinds of trauma going on. And through the mentoring process, you know, that stuff comes out. And even if you do have these like awesome steps forward and then one giant leap backwards, I'm not gonna walk away. That's not how we roll. I've been wavering in faith. I've always wanted to write songs that are authentic. In New Zealand, one out of three girls will experience sexual assault before the age of 16. And what I want to do through music or through any form of activism is to change that statistic. One out of three is too many girls. Check, 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 check. We have an open door policy. We'll get artists coming through referrals from school, but also referrals from Oranga Tamariki, the youth justice system. Some of them, you know, they just through word of mouth or they come in off the street. They've just heard that there's this place here that does what I'm interested in with my passion. But I love her because she keep me away from the dramas, away from the cuffs, away from the snakes and the bluffs with a gotcha. Yeah, we just rap about past experience, shit we went through and um, yeah. daily struggles we are facing now. You know, things that happen in GI, things that like people from the other side that won't see here. Before music, man, I was just young, dumb and stupid, running around, just getting up to no goody, getting in trouble. <laughs> so, yeah, music led me down like a more positive pathway, so it gave me something to look forward to. Instrumentally, we should keep the majority of that stuff. I'm David Ate, a.k.a. Dave and I'm the lead music mentor for the Crescendo Trust of Aotearoa. I'm guitarist, producer, uh, backing vocalist for Nisha Mystic. Nisha Mystic is a group more than a band. We blew up 20 years ago. That's a long time. It's one of these things that if you're not prepared for it, you know, it's, a, it's quite a shock. For me, it was one week I'm just walking down the street, a normal dude. And literally the following week, you know, um, I'd go and buy a burger. And by the time I get to bite into it, it's cold because we're just getting slammed by people. Today, for me, it's about sharing my experience with the next generation and, and passing on that torch so that when they do take on the industry, they have the best shot that they can take, I guess. The lowest point of my life was definitely when my family left. I had a lot of fines. I was homeless. Yeah, I was going through a breakup and everything just seemed so like <laughs> easy to give up on. I always sort of felt a bit of like the black sheep in the family. My mum always sort of saw life a bit differently, you know? Eventually, it got to the point where I just had a huge falling out, and that caused me to be completely cut off, completely homeless. I found my family through the people that are with me every day, the people that I make music with and that are always around me. Yeah, all my friends, my brothers out there. Yeah. Holy yeah, smoke! Well, I felt like I was holding the breath. That was, that was impressive. 
Taranaki toku maunga, ko Wainongo toku awa, ko Mururaupatu toku marae, ko toku maru toku waka, ko Natakimahia toku hapu, ko Tiatiawa toku iwi, ko Marcus Powell toku ingwa. I am the CEO and founder of the Crescendo Trust of Aotearoa. I also have a history in the music industry and the bands uh, Blind Spot, Blacklist and City of Souls. I got to understand the climate of the music industry and just take it all in, absorb everything. All that knowledge that I gained along the way, that's where I see myself, you know, giving back to our rangatahi. And that's part of the reason why I formed the Crescendo Trust. Another thing we do is an event called the Jam Cellar. And it's a small event where young people get to perform their original pieces, and it's just a very safe environment. It allows them to fail and be okay with it. Hello, family. Hello. So, guys, I've invited you all here today to talk about the Jam Cellar. So traditionally, we've held it at the Corbin Estate Arts Centre, so being a smaller venue. But this time, we are going to up the stakes. We're going to up the ante. We want to get into a bigger venue. So you guys will be performing at the Tuning Fork. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I saw Billie Eilish and Pearl Waves at Tuning Fork. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they were, like, so amazing. You guys are going to have to run the whole thing. So that's the marketing, the ticketing, the security. Like the whole event, you guys are going to organise yourself. I'm freaking out, bro. <laughs> but yeah, that sounds me. I'm excited to do a big performance at a venue that has been my dream to play at for a really long time. Plus, to write a song, an original song for the performance, so you have four weeks to come up with this track. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> to write a song, mix master, produce, and, and then make a it. stage performance, and then the live and then the events and the marketing. <laughs> Embrace the fear. Yeah. The challenge that we've laid down for our rangatahi is a pretty big deal. They've got to design you know, the artwork. What's the venue going to look like? How are they going to light it? Where's the audience going to come from? You know, are you going to sell all these tickets? It's yeah, nail-biting time. So we're going to have guest mentors come in and work with you guys. Lawton from Cora, Mellow Downs, MC Tali, No Comply. Yeah. To be able to work with the people that they're giving us the chance to work with, it's insane, so I'm super excited. I've studied at a music school and I've had a few performances, but other than that, this is, you know, the, the biggest opportunity that I've been given. All of that is possible, by the way. I think to myself sometimes, like, if Crescendo Trust was available to Nisha Mystic, you know, when we first started in 1999, you know, I'd be a genius by now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be rich. <laughs> it's like you're excited, but you know how much work is involved. <laughs> so you're like, oh. I hate organizing anything, so I'm not looking forward to organizing this gig. <laughs> I just remember the first time I performed at a jam cellar um, event that I was singing to the ground the whole time, so I guess like... <laughs> Being nervous. And... Yeah. <laughs> so I guess now I kind of have to... Um, Put nervousness to the side because yeah, it's going to be bigger. Yeah. I used to be in the events team and we run the jam cellar at Corbin's. It's a small scale, but this is new venue, new production company. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, and it's just like really excited. Who's been telling you these lies? The main reason why we're doing this is because we want them to be able to replicate an event like this over and over and over again for themselves, you know. And what better way to do that than to throw them right into the deep end. I'm freaking out a little because I like planning. I like to be prepared. So lots of planning to do. I'm excited about planning. And I've decided to create something real cool. Um, the hardest part with any show is getting bums and seats. <laughs> In terms of putting the event on, that process is pretty straightforward. Getting people through those doors, that's where our artists are going to learn a lot. They're going to learn a lot about their music and their audience, so it'd be interesting to see how they handle that side. <sighs> Yeah, bro. Yeah. That was fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs>
I can't wait till these people see you guys. Eh? Like, I don't think they're expecting uh, just, just how amazing you guys are. I've known this for a while. <laughs> yeah. Now it's time for the rest of the world to see it. Come gig night, I'm hoping that our artists finally realise their potential. Finally see that all of this work that is going into this is for you. It's because, yes, you are worth it. How are you feeling about things? It's a bit hot, man. A little bit stressful. You know, it is going to give them an idea of what the, the actual real world is like. Pressure, I work with pressure. Pressure makes diamonds, you know what I'm saying? There is a lot on, and I think you should be nervous. You guys need to be more proactive. We're not doing this for you guys this time. My intention was, if you can handle me, you can handle guys out there. If I come down on you hard, it's because I've got the best intention. I'm asleep, I'll be in the dream. Let's just sleep. I know when the meets, I'm too fucking free.